Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at loading your Spring XML files from the class path. So I've got this little Hello World Spring program that I created in the last tutorial. And at the moment, I'm using this file system XML application context. Uh, one thing that I've actually realized myself since the last tutorial is that the reason Eclipse is giving me a little warning here is because although application context doesn't have a close method, so I can't type this, context.close, file system XML application context does have a close method. So let's cast context to file system XML application context, which of course is exactly what it is and then we can call the close method on it. And your application context will be uh, closed anyway when a program quits, but if you want to be doubly sure that you're not getting resource leaks and you want that annoying warning to go away in Eclipse, then you can indeed close it like this. Now, um, often it's convenient to put your beans.xml or whatever XML files you have because your Spring application might use lots of XML files in some package or some subfolder. Let's in fact create a package to put this beans.xml in. So um, I've got my code at the moment in com.caverprogramming.spring.test. Let's create a new package. So I'll right click the package and go to new package and I'll add on to the end there dot beans. Click finish and I'll just drag beans.xml into beans here and expand that. Now if I right click this and go to in Eclipse, I've got this copy qualified name option, at least in this version of Eclipse. Uh, and if I paste that in here, it will save me having to type out the full um, the full file path of beans.xml myself. So uh, this is what I get if I copy it. And I, I suppose this is relative to the um, the actual workspace that the project is in. If I delete the first bit and just leave this SRC folder at the start, what I've got now is a relative file path relative to the program's working directory. So starting, so starting with this SRC folder, which you would see if you looked at the, uh, at the program folder in um, Explorer or in Finder or something like that. So let's just save this and run it because it should still work. There we go. Now, supposing I want to load my beans.xml from any folder on the class path, I can do that by changing file system XML application context, what a mouthful that is, <laughs> to um, class path XML, um, class path XML application context. Here we go. And I also have to change this cast down here. And now uh, this application context will load from anywhere, any directory on the class path. So uh, my, my, if I look um, at where my beans.xml is, it's in a package. So relative to the class path, I know that it exists in a folder that starts with com, because that, that's, that's the first um, bit of my package name. So I, I know that I can delete this stuff now uh, because the package um, directory hierarchy of course always is, exists somewhere on the class path otherwise it wouldn't be any use so now I can start just with my package names I just need the qualified kind of name of my beans.xml with slashes because this is loading from a directory but the directory can be anywhere now on the class path so anywhere that I could put Java code, I could also put this beans.xml, basically. Let's try that. I think I've got everything right, and I'll run that. And there we go, and, and it's still running. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at configuring beans with constructor arguments, and that's going to take us uh, another step towards looking at dependency injection, which is this big thing in Spring. So. Uh, yeah, I should mention again, if you're, if you're watching on YouTube, you can find a link to the full course in the description of the video, underneath the video. And um, I'll put the 
I'll put this source code as well on www.caveofprogramming.com. If you scroll down to the YouTube videos there, you'll be able to click on it and um, get the source code here if you want it. So that's it for this time, and until next time, happy coding.